Hello, hello, Mordimers here and today I'm gonna show you the game I promised yesterday. So this is another game from the match from 1963 uh, in New York played between Bobby Fischer, who was number six in the world at that time with ranking 2757. He was only 20 years old and he's gonna play as white and his opponent Ruben Fine. Uh, he was already retired, but uh, uh, I estimated his ranking according to the chess metrics as 25. 500 and he was already 49 years old and he's gonna play as black and this game has a little controversy because Ruben Fine was quite unhappy about Bobby Fischer include this game in his uh, book and Ruben Fine in his book wrote as follow my contacts with Bobby were rare and superficial once we met by accident in a chess club and played some offhand games. To my surprise, they were recorded by someone present and Bobby even reprinted one in his book My 60 Memorable Games. To record offhand games is unheard of in modern times. Uh, the last one who did so significantly was Murphy. Uh, to the best of my memory, the overall score was slightly in his favor. So uh, Bobby Fischer was a very strong player at that time, but Ruben Fine still knew uh, how to play. However, this game will show you uh, quite some interesting ideas. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. We have e4 by Bobby Fischer, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4 and bishop c5. Gioca Piano on the board. Uh, one of the most popular, the most classical openings uh, played for a couple of hundred years. Uh, even in 17th century, uh, Italian masters played that. Uh, but we have B4, a famous Evans Gambit. Evans Gambit, uh, very sharp and very interesting in ideas, rich in ideas. And I will explain you why. So we have Bishop on B4. So the bishop is no longer on this diagonal, so doesn't look on f2 anymore. And also it allow white to rapid development. So we have c3 with tempo, bishop uh, has to be moved. Uh, bishop on e7 is possible on c5, but the most popular is bishop on a5. And this was played in the game and now d4. Uh, and what is the idea? What are main ideas here? So first, rapid development, uh, building this center, uh, but there is something more. Look at this, queen on b3 with the idea of, uh, you know, facing this battery on f7. This looks pretty dangerous. And also the pawn, the strongest pawn in the black structure, uh, looks pretty attacked. So if black takes it, actually, e5 is possible and e5 pawn uh, gonna control f6 the favorite square uh, of the knight so that's gonna be pretty annoying and interesting uh, and Ruben Fine goes for the main line, so e takes on d4. And now this pawn is pinned, so it doesn't look good for, for white, okay? This pawn is pinned. Uh, and here the best move uh, is the castle. More sharp queen on b3 is also possible, but castle is, is, is much better. Uh, and here is the quite critical position where black have to decide what to play. So the most popular knight g on e7 and uh, this was uh, played by Wesley so a couple of times. Uh, so definitely good idea. For some reason Stockfish prefer a knight on f6, but it's not so uh, popular nowadays. Uh, also d6 is pretty natural. Uh, and d3 it's called Dufresne defense because it was played many times by uh, Dufresne and one of the famous, the most famous games in the chess history was Evergreen game and this game you just have to know and Dufresne played d3 and the game became just immortal. It's 
it's called evergreen game and it's called like that because every generation find a new continuations for that and believe me or not the game was played in 19th century but still in the 21st century Gary Kasparov found the new lines and still contribute to this game so can you imagine that this is something crazy and I have this game analyzed uh, over there so uh, click the card and check that game i really recommend that but you know do some preparation before get some some tea some coffee whatever you like sit in some relaxing place and you know with the silent mind because this game gonna give you a lot of headache it's really complicated with all of these lines you know uh, after that the evergreen game is just just amazing so i really recommend that but here we have d takes on c3 quite obvious move however not really the best we have queen on b3 now this is the main idea of attacking uh, f7 and now black what black should play is queen on f6 queen on f6 and after bishop g5 queen g6 and this is this this game can be continued and everything is fine with the position however here we have queen on e7 slightly worse move uh, but it's not losing yet uh, now we have knight on c3 by white threatening already jumping on d5 what black should play in your opinion this is quite dangerous threat, so definitely, definitely something should be done about that. So the only move, the actually the only move is bishop takes on c3. This is the only move. And after queen on c3, knight on f6, bishop a3 and d6, uh, black are quite fine, okay? But black has to be very precise, so not easy to play. Okay, black have extra two pawns, but really have to know uh, what to do in this opening. So for example, e5 is one of the uh, craziest continuation. Normally, rook a on e1 pushing or rook on d1, rook on e1 attacking in the center. And if black don't manage to castle, they are in really, really big troubles. Uh, okay, but here we have knight on f6, knight on f6 by Ruben Fine. so he tried to defend d5, but this just doesn't work. We have knight on d5 by Bobby Fischer, uh, and now knight takes on d5, e takes on d5, and now look at this. There is, there are already some threats uh, on this open e file. Uh, for now, the bishop uh, is preventing that, but it's not for long. So, uh, what black should play? Actually, the engine recommends uh, to castle. So, give up the the piece, okay? And this is you can see that position how good for white is already. So, if you play. Uh, Evans gambit and somebody takes the the pawn uh, on c3 and then develop the knight keep in mind that this is good idea to make this attack uh, and now we have knight on e5 by black so everything looks pretty okay we have knight on e5 queen on e5 and now bishop on b2 attacking the queen but also attacking g7 okay this is quite nice x-ray so black have to do something also there are some ideas like a rook can come to e1 uh, and after exchanging uh, with the bishop then another rook comes and then queen can come to e3 and checkmate the black king so something has to be done about that for now queen is under attack so queen on g5 was played defending g7 defending also e3 two important squares also defending e7 if needed so uh, what would you play as white in this position this is already crashing for white but you have to find the move which is you know winning so the best move in this position is h4 you can first uh, move the rooks first and you know keep the rook in the center but then you have to deflect the queen and then queen has to do something and it's not really easy what to play but i will show you some of the lines uh, what could happen what the ruben fine play is queen on h4 which isn't the best move uh, in the game we have bishop on g7 uh, and then rook on g8 
rook f on e1 and now Ruben Fine don't even bother to uh, win the exchange here he just play king on d8 and here is another moment where you can pause the video and find the winning move for white while I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so there are actually two winning moves, like two really crushing moves. One is queen on b2. It's possible, but what Bobby Fischer play is queen on g3. And after this move, Ruben Fine resigned the game. And he resigned because the queen has to stay on this diagonal. Otherwise, there is a checkmate idea here. With the rook on e1, there is a checkmate idea here. So queen can't just take uh, the queen because of this checkmate. Uh, and also the best move would be queen on e7, okay? Queen on e7, rook on e7. And as you see, it's already problematic. So king on e7, now queen e5, uh, king d8. And of course, checkmate is coming anyway. So uh, it just doesn't work. So uh, queen on g3 and black just resigned the game. There is nothing they can do. Uh, the other option, as I said, if you found a uh, queen on b2, it's also winning, but it's not so clear. For example, bishop on b4, uh, moving the bishop to this diagonal, bishop can be taken, uh, but much faster, much more precise move would be queen on f6. And now queen on f6, bishop on f6, bishop e7, rook on e7, and now d6 trying to make some space for the king but actually rook e3 king d7 rook a on e1 and checkmate is coming and uh, maybe it doesn't look like because the rook still controls the last rank uh, but whatever black play for example c5 making more space rook e7 king d8 and checkmate looks like this okay so one rook controls uh, the seven rank and one rook controls the e file and we have this beautiful uh, checkmate so uh, that what would happen so congratulations both of the moves are winning so queen on b2 but queen on g3 by bobby fisher much more precise and now this position if Ruben Fine could do something, for example, queen on h6, still controlling uh, g7, what would happen? Uh, rook a on e1 with check, uh, bishop on e1, rook on e1 with check, and now king d8. And now d6, d6. And this pawn uh, is very, very annoying, controlling uh, these two squares, so checkmate is coming. So black have to take it actually and uh, making a space for the king to escape but there is no escape so for example bishop on f7 and now the rook can come to e8 to exchange which is very important uh, rook on f8 and now bishop on d4 and the idea is to checkmate from b6 okay so sacrifice the bishop and or the queen more effective and uh, checkmate. So um, d5, now the queen controls uh, b6, that's possible, but then simply queen on d5 and black doesn't have good moves now. Uh, so queen on f4, for example, bringing some defender also maybe to c7, uh, attacking the bishop, uh, but it doesn't work bishop e3 queen f7 and now bishop g5 winning the game okay winning the queen f first if the king moves then we're gonna have a, a checkmate here okay on d6 that would be a checkmate so queen on f6 and and now all is gone okay queen on g8 winning this pawns and winning the game so uh, queen on h6 doesn't work the best idea for black actually is queen on e7 and this is the only defending move it's still losing but but there is some resistance the idea is uh, to bring more control on e1 together with the bishop so uh, the rooks can't go to e1 so for example bishop on g7 uh, and now there are pretty nasty threats here so rook on g8 
d6 as before c takes on d6 making some uh, some space but the easiest way now is bishop on c3 bishop on c3 queen on c3 rook on g6 now this was a very serious threat queen h8 uh queen f8 and now rook f on e1 okay rook on e6 queen h7 it's not like you know a very easy win it's just you know building the the position uh before the end game so white gonna get the winning end game uh and now if black want to develop the pieces because that's the only way they can do something like b6 bishop e6 this is the simplest d takes on e6 now queen e4 attacking the rook something has to be done rook b8 queen can go to c6 and this is very nasty queen uh, bishop d7 now queen c7 uh, winning more material and or the rook or okay this is completely winning for white but that would be the best uh, idea uh, for black actually to defend queen on e7 but uh, but Ruben Fine uh, didn't go for that and he just lost the game after bishop g7 rook on g8 rook f on e1 king d8 and queen g3 so a uh, very beautiful game it's good to know and yeah thanks for watching if you like this video press like if you don't like for some reason press unlike and more quality content is coming press subscribe if you don't want to miss anything smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one